Hello everyone, I once again welcome you to my series of lecture that is understanding pharmaceutical science with Dr. Hari Haran. So, today we are going to discuss about one of the genetic transfer process happening in a bacteria that is bacterial transduction. So, I have divided this lecture broadly into two parts. So, one we understand about what is meant by a transduction and the role of bacteriophage and in the second part we will understand about the historical background of the transduction and the different types of transduction. So, first we understand what is meant by a transduction. So, transduction is a genetic transfer process. So, in which the horizontal gene transfer happens between two bacteria that is transfer of genetic material from one bacteria to another bacteria uh, which is mediated by a virus. So, the virus which generally infects the bacteria we called as bacteriophage. So, we can precisely tell that. So, transduction is a process of horizontal gene transfer happening from one bacteria to another bacteria mediated by a bacteriophage. <coughs> so, before understanding about the process, first we understand about the virus and the bacteriophage. So, virus by simple we can define that it is an obligated intracellular parasite. That means, so virus is a intracellular parasite that means it, it enters into a cell that is why it is called as intracellular and it is called as an obligated parasite. What it will do is it will take up the host genetic mechanism and it started producing its own genetic material and other packing material and finally it destroys the cells and leave the cell. So, that is why we virus we can simply define as an obligated intracellular parasite. It is a very simple entity which generally composed of only two chemicals. One is the genetic material which may be an RNA or DNA in nature and second it is a protein coat. So, the genetic material is kept inside a protein coat which is generally called as a capsid. So, this virus is generally unable to replicate autonomously like a bacteria or a fungi which can divide on itself even the humans cells can divide on its itself whereas the virus needs a host. So, once it gets a host it is appropriate host only then it can start at taking control of its genetic machinery then it can produce many copies. So, it needs a host to multiply. So, that is why if you see the each virus has its own unique host, certain virus can infect only humans, certain virus can infect plants, certain virus can infect a particular animals only. So, the virus which infects a bacteria we called as a bacteriophage. So, in this type of in this case that is the bacterial transduction, the genetic transfer is mediated by the virus. So, the virus which infects bacteria that is the bacteriophage only can mediate this process. So, if you see there are different types of bacteriophage, we can classify this bacteriophage into two types based upon its ability to multiply. So, one is the virulent bacteriophage <coughs> and second is the temperate bacteriophage. So, first we understand about a virulent bacteriophage. So, the virulent bacteriophage or the phage particles which can replicate immediately once it get inside into a host. So, once a phage particle <coughs> gets its genetic material inside a host, it started replicating. So, it replicates into huge number of copies and finally, the cell gets sliced and these particles are released to the environment and it is ready for to infect the new host. This type of bacteriophage we generally called as a virulent bacteriophage. And the second type is the temperate bacteriophage. So, in this case what happened is that the phage particle instead of replicating after entering into the host, its genome gets integrated with the bacterial chromosome. So, this integration we generally called as the prophage. So, the insertion of the viral genome into the bacterial chromosome, so that we call as a prophage. So, the bacterium can exist in this prophage stage, once the bacteria will divide 
this prophase that is this integrated genetic material that is viral and the bacterial chromosome also pass on to next generation. So, it unharms the bacterial cell and the divides and it will pass on to next to next generation. So, sometimes this prophase can once again comes out as an uh, bacteriophage genetic material, then it can enter into the lytic pathway also. So, this type of bacteriophage we called as a temperate bacteriophage and the relationship between this viral genome and the host chromosomal genome and this relationship we generally called as lysogeny and the bacteria which is lysogenized this viral genome we called as lysogen. So, this is a simple understanding about the virulent phage and temperate phage. So, in this picture <coughs> I have discussed about the life cycle of this bacteria phage. So, the bacteria phage can enter into two life cycle, one is a lytic cycle that I have shown in the left hand side and second is the lysogenic cycle. So, what happens first in both the cases is that first a phage particle enters into a bacteria through a receptor and gets internalized its genetic material. So, in this picture you can see that the phage particle internalized its genetic material which is denoted in red color and the chromosomal DNA is in blue color. So, once it is outside, so if it is a virulent phage, it follows the lytic pathway. So, immediately it start replicating its viral genetic material and the cap everything caspid. So, everything has been synthesized then finally, it gets assemblies and the cell lysis occurs and it gets released. So, this is how a lytic pathway will work. So, in contrast what happens in a lysogenic pathway, this genetic material which has been internalized get integrated with the host chromosome of the bacteria that forms a prophage. So, once the bacterial cell divides, this prophage also get divides and gets carried to the next generation. In some instance, it can come back to its original state and can enter to the lytic cycle. So, this is all about how a bacteriophage will work and a virus follows a replicating cycle. So, the understanding of this genetic uh, working ability only which will be a better understanding of the transduction process can be happen. So, first we understand about the bacterial transduction. So, in my second part, we will understand about the historical background, how the transduction has been identified. <laughs> Initially, the generalized transduction was discovered. It was discovered by Joshua Lederberg and Norton Jinder in 1951. So, as you already know that Joshua Lederberg and the Tatum were responsible for the another type of genetic transfer happening in bacteria that is bacterial conjugation. So, Joshua Lederberg had done many attempts to show the conjugation experience in various bacterial species. So, while he was trying this various type of conjugation process, so he discovered this generalized transduction. So, as you can see what happened is Lederberg and Jinder perform repeating experiment on certain species of serovar, especially serovar entrica and serovar typhimurium. So, they found that incubation of this mixture in a minimum media sometimes forms a new prototype, sometimes shows the genetic transfer 1 in 10,000, sorry 1 in 1 lakh that is 10 to the power 5. So, after that they have performed the similar to Davis YouTube experiment to confirm the identification of this transduction because uh, since Lederberg already discovered the type of genetic transfer that is conjugation that is the direct contact of the bacteria is needed for performing this type of genetic transfer that is the bacterial conjugation. So, he used the same YouTube experiment as you can see from the picture that he has used the YouTube experiment in this case he has taken the salmonella species of two oxotropic mutants kept in both the arms of the U tip and at the center of the U he has separated with a filter through which the nucleic acid uh, sorry through which the media can pass, but not the bacterium. So, he started pushing back and forth this nutrient media. So, this filter does not allow the bacteria, 
but the bacteriophage are smaller enough which can pass through these holes and so that the genetic transfer can happen. So, this has allowed the phage particle that is P22 to pass, but not the bacteria. So, after that cultivating into a minimal media the so the growth. So, Lederberg knows that this YouTube does not provide the direct contact. So, since it does not provide the direct contact that means another type of genetic transfer. So, since he has added the bacteriophage, so he assured that the bacteriophage is responsible for the transfer of genetic material. So, thereby the new concept of genetic transfer that was transduction was identified both by Lederberg and Jinder. So, let us understand about the transduction. So, thereby finally, it comes with a conclusion that the transduction is one of the genetic transfer process happening in a bacteria that is the transfer of genetic material from one bacteria to another bacteria which is mediated by a viral particle called bacteriophage. So, what happening in this process if you see that the virus particle once enters into the bacteriophage it forms a prophage by passing through the lysogenization process. Once it breaks away, it carries some of the part of the genetic material by an error. So, this genetic particle of the bacteria can get packed into the capsid and get infected to the another bacterium in which the transfer can happen. So, this can happen either by lysogenic pathway or lytic pathway also. So, the amount which has been entered into the capsid is transferred to the next bacterium is responsible for the genetic transfer. So, different based on these types of genetic material how it is transferring, the transduction can be broadly classified into different types. It is very precisely can be classified into two types that is one is the generalized transduction and second is the specialized transduction. So, thank you very much for patiently listening this uh, basic introduction of this bacterial transduction. So, in my future lecture you can get an inside knowledge about the generalized transduction as well as the specialized transduction. So, thank you very much.